And we're back. I'm going to go ahead and cover some of uh, the accessories that come with the telescope. By the way, that's my cat Newton. He's my uh, my little assistant. You're right, buddy. Um, first things first, the the diagonal. It's nice that it's an erect image diagonal because you can use this telescope for uh, terrestrial use. And you can view off mountains and good stuff like that. But um, which is nice because, like I said, it does give the telescope a dual purpose. But the problem is, is that this particular you're supposed to be helping me. Uh, this particular diagonal is not exactly the highest quality. So I think it's more or less going to be a weak link in the telescope itself. You're probably going to want to uh, maybe replace this with a better one. Just a suggestion. Um, the next thing, the, uh, the three times Barlow lens, this is pretty much useless. Okay. And the reason why it's useless is because, for one, it's cheap, cheaply made. It's just plastic. I don't even know if the if the lens in there is, is glass or plastic or whatever. It's it's pretty bad. But with the, a telescope of this size, only 70 millimeters of aperture. See, even he doesn't like it. But uh, with a telescope of only 70 millimeters in aperture, the problem is that you're never going to be able to reach those high magnification levels, at least uh, of any usefulness, with a three times Barlow. I mean, it's you're talking about a lot of power there, and you're just not going to be able to, to use that much magnification in a telescope of such small aperture. And uh, even if you could, you know, even if you had a huge telescope, the problem is, is that seeing conditions, sky transparency, all that good stuff, uh, more times than not, uh, it's never, never completely optimal for uh, for using that much magnification. So you'll, you'll probably never use this. Um, I'll probably end up just throwing this away. I have a regular two tons Barlow um, that I'll probably use with this telescope. So I won't even bother with that. Um, the next thing, the eyepieces that it comes with are pretty cheap as well. I would probably replace these as quick as possible. Um, that'd probably be my first thing to replace, actually, would be these eyepieces. Uh, if you take a look on the eyepiece, I don't know if you can see that. My camera's not really want to pick up a lot. Anyway, it says uh, 20 millimeters on it. That's your focal length for the eyepiece. And before the 20, there's a letter H. Well, the letter H means that it is a, um, a Huygens design eyepiece. Um, the eyepiece was developed by Christopher Huygens way back in the day. Um, and basically it's just an outdated design. Uh, it's not really good to use with uh, telescopes, of, uh, or at least modern telescopes that have um, shorter focal lengths. Because what happens is, is you get a really small field of view and uh, the eye relief is just very, very short. You pretty much have to have your eyeball touching the lens in order to get the, the full field of view. Um, and optically, you know, it's, it's not the best quality, so you're probably going to want to get these um, replaced as soon as possible. And of course, you get the lens cap to keep the, uh, the objective lens clean. It even comes with a, a, uh, an opening so you can stop down the aperture if you want to. You could actually take some uh, some solar filter material, some film, and cover up this hole, and uh, you can have a nice homemade solar filter. Which I'll I'll get into that eventually, maybe in the summertime coming up, and go into how to make a solar filter. You want to make sure you do that safely, by the way. Uh, never look at the sun, the telescope without a solar filter. It's a pretty good way to destroy your vision. So um. Oh, and it did come with some software. Def Notice that the Sky First Light Edition. Um, I have not used it yet, so I really don't know anything about it. Maybe eventually I'll throw it into my computer, run it, and see what it's all about, and maybe I'll do a nice little review on that. So that's what you get in the box. All that stuff right there. The three times Barlow. 
just chuck it the uh, direct image diagonal three cheap eyepieces um, your lens cover the OTA your alt azimuth mount the accessory tray and the uh, the laser dot finder which like I said that's probably I think a good thing um, I've used it a couple times and uh, I like it to the point where I'm actually maybe taking it off this telescope and putting on my big one over here well, that's what you get so how does it perform well given that it's at a beginner's price point and that it's only got a 70 millimeters of aperture I have to say it performs pretty good I actually exceeded my expectations for such a small little scope um, the fact that it is 70 millimeters it's going to definitely limit what you can see with it uh, you'll be able to see the moon obviously um, the brighter planets like Jupiter, Saturn, uh, Venus, Mars um, even some of the brighter deep sky objects I think you'll be able to uh, to see those as well. Like I said, I've only taken it out twice, and uh, but when I have taken it out, I've seen Jupiter through it, which was pretty nice. Um, the moon looks spectacular through it. So if anything else, uh, you can definitely use this for looking at the moon. It does give some really nice crisp images of uh, of the moon. I've also seen um, M42, the Orion Nebula. And I've also seen M31, the Andromeda Galaxy. And uh, those look uh, definitely, you could definitely tell what they were. They look pretty good. Um, like I said, the, the, only, the only chink in the armor, so to speak, uh, is going to be the eyepieces, for sure. You're definitely going to need to get some better eyepieces to get the, the most out of this telescope. And maybe, like I said, even uh, upgrade that diagonal. But uh, I think overall it performs uh, pretty admirably for such a little scope. Um, like I said, the fact that you know it's only 70 millimeters, it's going to limit what you can see. But uh, like I said, the bright planets, moon, some of the brighter um, uh, deep sky objects. Um, I haven't tried out any binary stars yet. I don't know how well it splits binaries. I'll have to take it out eventually and maybe. Uh, try again on making a, a video on its performance but um, I think like I said overall it it's, does pretty well um, as far as the optics go like I said uh, it is coded the images seem to be pretty good uh, there is a lot of chromatic aberration though um, which for me it's kinda kinda hard to, to bite the bullet on that it, it, because I'm used to, to using, you know, a Newtonian reflector. Uh, the only aberration I really have to deal with with the newt is uh, mainly coma. So, you know, you might be able to to overlook the chromatic aberration a bit. Um, it's really not big of a deal, but just for my taste, I it kind of kind of hard for me to to digest that I should say. <laughs> like I said, overall it's uh it's pretty good.